Hi, the Mud Broker here. Today I'm going to do a video on chicken fryers and Dutch ovens. I'm using a lapel mic so hopefully this sounds a little bit better and doesn't get in my way too much. And also towards the end of the video I'm going to show you a way to use a Dutch oven that you may or may not have done before. Okay, I'll start off with chicken fryers. A chicken fryer is simply an extra deep skillet. They're usually about twice as deep as the average skillet and it should have a lid. This one here is an old Birmingham stove and range, it used to be my mother-in-law's. And chicken fryers like Dutch ovens can either be enameled like this one or unenameled. This is a Renfro ware. Even though it's kind of rough on the outside, it's really good iron and the inside is just beautifully machined. It's glassy smooth in there. Kind of a nice little Dutch oven. Anyhow, chicken fryers, you can either deep fry them with deep oil in them, or a lot of people would also use them to brown up their chicken or beef or whatever they were cooking. Brown it up first, put the lid on, and then put it in the oven to finish. And that's the reason why most chicken fryers have a lid. The problem you're going to run into with chicken fryers is it's fairly common to find them without a lid. And cast iron lids can really be a pain. Sometimes you find Dutch ovens without a lid too. But cast iron lids are fairly uncommon because most skillets didn't have lids to begin with. And the lids, the sizes, don't necessarily match the size of the chicken fryer or Dutch oven you're trying to get a lid for. The size numbers weren't made to any particular standard. This is, I think, a BSR. It might be a lodge lid. I'm not quite as up on my lid lore as I should be. But hopefully you can see there I scratched it off a little bit. It says 10 and a quarter. That doesn't really tell you much because the 10 and a quarter is referring to is the measurement from the outside edge to the other outside edge. Most There's also a number 8 on there below the 10 and a quarter. You can't see it very well but take my word for it. Most number 8 skillets are about 10 and a half inches in diameter and when you're looking for a lid for a chicken fryer or a Dutch oven the important measurement is the inside diameter of, let me set that down, the inside diameter of the chicken fryer or Dutch oven and the outside diameter of this, ri this ring on the inside. You very very seldom find cast iron lids in second hand shops. Where you will find them is antique stores and online. Finding them online can be a bit of an ordeal because a lot of people aren't very clear on how exactly they're measuring the lid. And what you need to know, like I said, is the inside of your Dutch oven or fryer and the outside of the inner ring. A lot of people will say it's ten and a quarter inches on the inside. Well that doesn't help you much. So even if you talk to the sellers you can still get miscommunications. The easiest way to do it is to go to an antique shop or someplace where you can take your Dutch oven with you and match the lid and see if it fits. This is a Wagnerware chicken fryer. Flip that over to show you the back real quick. And see that's a Wagnerware. And it just happens that that BSR or Lodge lid fits it perfectly. This is a Griswold Dutch oven and that lid also fits perfectly but it's mostly just chance. If you're trying to find a lid ideally you'll have something like this which is marked six ways to Sunday you know exactly what it is it's a Griswold number 10 tight top Dutch oven lid and on the back side there's patent dates there's a Griswold logo that's a slant logo they call that you can see the letters are somewhat italicized and down below is a catalog number 
So you can match up the logo, the catalog number, and everything else, and you'll have a lid that perfectly fits your number 10 tight top slant logo Griswold Dutch oven. Problem is, most times you're not going to have that advantage. You'll just have a lid that happens to fit. But there is an alternative. What you will find lots and lots of in secondhand stores are glass lids and metal ones. Little cheapy thin metal ones don't really work all that well in the oven, but the glass ones do. And in fact, some Dutch ovens and chicken fryers came from the factory with glass lids that actually have the manufacturer's name on it. There are Wagnerware glass lids out there, Griswold. But the thing you have to watch out for is sometimes they have a cheap plastic knob that isn't oven safe. If you put it in the oven, the knob will melt. This is a good one. I've used this in the oven before and that is oven safe. But this one wouldn't really work because it doesn't have a lip on the inside. Even though it fits the outside edge is good, it'll just slide around and you don't want that. Your best bet is to try and find a Pyrex glass lid with a knob molded in. This one doesn't quite fit. It's a little bit too small. But it has a ridge on the inside and take your Dutch oven or chicken fryer with you and just match them up. And usually lids like this in a second hand store like a Goodwill or St. Vincent de Paul are only a dollar or two a piece so you can find them pretty cheap and with a little bit of luck and a little bit of hunting eventually you'll find something that fits just right. So that's about it for Dutch ovens and chicken fryers. They're nice things to have. Like I say, you can find chicken fryers without a lid fairly easy. They're not hugely expensive depending on the brand and the age of them. They sell for anywhere from $25 to $40 generally, sometimes more if it's a vintage Griswold. But they're a great investment. You can use them for a lot of things. And once I get all this stuff cleared off, I am going to set up and show you how to make popcorn the way your great grandma did. All right, I have my Dutch oven on medium high heat. It's warming up. But as always, the first and most important ingredient to any recipe is alcohol. And today I'll be drinking a good winter drink, grog. I would like to thank my patrons on Patreon, Kay's Kist, Benedict Riggers, Tiarna Jenkins, Joy Jones, Damian Bamer, and Leo. Here's to you guys, and your support is greatly appreciated. Oh, that's good in the winter. Anyhow, like I said, I'm warming this up on medium-high heat, and it's pretty well heated up. Now I'm going to take a quarter cup of bacon grease. I've already melted it a little bit to make it easier to handle. We'll put that in there and get that heating up some. You can use popcorn popping oil, vegetable oil, clarified butter, lard probably even. I haven't tried it, but I don't see why you couldn't. But you kind of want to avoid regular butter or margarine because they have a tendency to scorch. Anyhow, I have that warming up a little bit. And to that we will add one half cup of popcorn. Put the cover on and we'll wait a couple of minutes. I'll edit out that so you don't have to watch me. But every 30 seconds or so, you want to give it a little shake back and forth and put it back on the heat. I'll be back once we start getting a little popping action going here and we'll show you that. You can hear it starting to pop now. It took about two minutes for that. And once this starts popping, it'll start off slow, but then all of a sudden it'll take off and it'll really seem to pop almost all at once. And hopefully you'll be able to hear that. Yeah. 
Yeah, she's really picking up speed now. Once it starts popping, you want to shake it a little more frequently, maybe every 15 seconds or so. Just keep things stirred up so it doesn't scorch. You can see it's spitting a little bit of steam and water out the side. That's normal, don't worry about that. You want to listen to it until it slows down. And don't worry about leaving a few kernels unpopped. You'd rather have some unpopped kernels than scorching it. That sounds like it's pretty much done, so I'll turn the heat off. Take it off the heat a little bit. Let her sit for just a minute to cool off, make sure everything is done popping. And I got a hot burner right here in front of me, so this is a little bit tough. But take the lid off. Dump it in a bowl. Do, do, do. Give her some salt. Toss it around a bit. A little more salt, because popcorn's got to have salt. And that is some of the best popcorn you've ever had. It'll have a slight smoky, bacony taste to it. And it's just absolutely delicious. It's also a very good way to season a Dutch oven that you've just reconditioned because it'll get a little bit of starch from the popcorn and the oil and it works it in there pretty nicely. So if you just got done stripping and refinishing an old Dutch oven, it's a good idea to make two or three batches of popcorn in it first just to get her a good head start on its seasoning. Well, that's all I have to say for right now. I thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.